What is going on guys? Gray here. Today I want to do an updated settings guide. A lot of this stuff has changed since update 3.0. Mainly they kind of cleaned up the UI and moved a few things around. They got rid of that problem where there was multiple things listed in each individual section. I'm not going to go over everything in great detail like I did the first video. I will pop that up in the top corner right now if you want to check that out so you can see some of the other uh, settings as well. I'm going to go over mainly the display and the controller settings. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, my field of view is 64. Keep in mind, Battlefield has a vertical field of view and not a horizontal field of view. There are converters online, but for me, a 64 field of view, uh, kind of, you know, if you were looking at what you use regularly for horizontal, for like Warzone, uh, Call of Duty of any kind, multiplayer, Halo maybe, uh, if you play Halo's multiplayer, 64 vertical field of view is about the same as a 97 uh, horizontal field of view. So you're going to want to find what field of view you use uh, in other games and kind of convert that to vertical. So keep that in mind. You're not going to want to run 110. If you run 110 horizontal, 110 vertical is going to look very strange. Of course, my vehicle third person field of view, I have that set to max. My ADS field of view, I have set to off. Brightness 50, motion blur zero, and all of these things off here. So anything from motion blur down, I have set to off. Uh, in my opinion, those are not really good to have while you're playing multiplayer. Some of those might be good for a story campaign kind of mode. We don't have that in Battlefield 2042, and they're definitely not helpful in um, you know in the game itself for playing multiplayer. If we look at my HUD, of course, you can kind of see these settings real quickly on, 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 and then the HUD motion is set to off. Camera shake, you want to have down to 50. I wish we could turn this completely off, but we cannot. Of course, the soldier compass, I always have it set to always on. Fire mode indicator when available. Uh, show vehicle seat is set to on. Colorblind modes, I have this set to custom. I'm not colorblind, but it does make, these, make things easier to see in game. So I have my squad color set to green. Uh, my custom friendly color set to kind of a blue color. Uh, the en enemy color is set to uh, pink. You can set this to pink or to yellow. Pink just stands out a little bit more, in my opinion, so you can see enemies a lot better when you ADS. And the custom neutral color, I just like that set to white. Uh, the kill log is on, and I have it set to nearby because I don't need to see everything in game. I personally just want to know what's going on where I am located. When it comes to the crosshairs, uh, of course, all of this is pretty much left alone here. My crosshair color, I did change to green. I like the look of that better. And you can see kind of what it looks like over to the right, uh, depending on what kind of setting you're in, if it's shadows, mid-tones, or bright. Uh, my hit indicator color is blue. My headshot color is red. And my kill color is that bright green. My armor hit color is that blue. So you can change those as well. I prefer to do that so I kind of know exactly when I'm getting, you know, a shot in on someone, exactly where I'm hitting them. And when it comes to the mini-map, I do have this turned up a bit. My distance on foot is 150, distance on ground vehicles is 150, and minimap view distance is 220. Let's go ahead and get over to the controller settings. I have my controls and buttons set both to custom. I'll talk about more, more about that here in just a minute. Uh, my ground vehicle is default and alternate. My transport vehicle is default and default. Aircraft is default and alternate. And gunner is default and alternate. Now keep in mind, I'm not a big fan ever. I, I have messed around with tanks and planes and things in Battlefield. But I'm not like a lot of people that, you know, that's pretty much what they mainly do. I'm more of a, you know, kind of on the ground kind of fighting person myself. I, I like to get, be on those uh, on ground kind of fights, you know, those boots on the ground kind of fights with other players. So there may be some better vehicle controls out there that I don't use. So keep that in mind. I'm not a huge vehicle person. When it comes to the global settings, uh, you can turn all of this off. Personally, that's what I like better. You might want to change some of this if you like inverted controls. When it comes to on foot, my soldier aim sensitivity is set to 30. Uh, my inverted vertical look, of course, is off. My field of view, once again, is 64. ADS field of view is set to off. You can turn this on because when this is on, the weapon sight will be relative to your FOV. I did notice before update 3.0 and 3.1, it seemed like when you had this set to on, there was a bug. The aim assist and everything just kind of went haywire when you aim down sight with this on. So that is why I turned mine off. You can mess around with this to see which one feels better. Uh, it is kind of nice to have this on. Personally, I have this on in any other game. That there is an option to have this. But in Battlefield 2042, as of right now, off feels better for me. Soldier aim assist is 95 and aim assist zoom snap is 80. The aim assist in this game is not really that strong. Anyway, they're still kind of tweaking uh, the aim assist issues on console. There's a lot of controller aim assist issues on console where... When the game first came out, it was pretty much non-existent. It's gotten a little bit better now, but the aim assist is not crazy high. 
And in my opinion, when you put it to 100, something does not feel right. It doesn't feel like it's extra sticky or the aim assist works better. It just feels off. And the aim assist zoom snap is kind of the same. 80 almost is the sweet spot in my opinion. The soldier sprint button, I have this set to click and the double tap sprint forward is set to auto sprint. And I did change the sprint button. Normally this would be the L3 button. So you'd have to actually push in L3 like any other game. But what I did was go in here. Of course, you just click uh, your X if you're on PlayStation. I guess that would be A on Xbox. And you're going to bind this instead of to L3. You're just going to push up on the left stick like you're walking. Of course, it's going to say walk forward. And that will give you traversal sprint or your double sprint. Just hit X to confirm that or A on Xbox. And now when you're in game and you're running around, you're not going to have to press that L3 trigger or that L3 stick. You can just push up like you're walking and you will actually go into that automatic sprint. And that is the reason that I have these set to custom. If you do not have these set to custom, that will not work. So make sure these are on custom and then just kind of copy and paste this and it will work properly. The sprint to vault is turned off. The soldier weapon zoom I have to hold. Of course, zoom is L1. I shoot with L1, R1. I did a lot of custom controller tuning for my buttons to, you know, kind of match the way I play other games. That is kind of personal preference. So you kind of set that up however you want, but you can do that down in the controller tuning settings. Uh, of course, scope and steady scope all set to, you know, default. My soldier zoom aim sensitivity. I had been lower with this for a while, been a bit higher. I feel like a hundred is best. That's kind of default. But if it does feel too slow, I would recommend going up with it. Going a bit lower is not bad. I don't mind zoom aim, aim sensitivity lower if you know you're going to have a high moving around sensitivity. But when it comes to that zoom aim, aim sensitivity in Battlefield 2042, I feel like if it's much lower, I lose a lot of targets up close if I'm ADS. If so, I'm in a fight with someone and someone else runs by, it's hard for me to snap onto those targets when that's a bit lower. So I like 100 or higher, just personal preference. Uh, auto deploy parachute is off. Air spawn parachute uh, deploy, of course, is on. Quick throw grenades is off. And everything else right here is just set to default. My advanced setting, my aim left right acceleration is eight. My vertical aim ratio and my vertical zoom ra aim ratio are 70 and 100. My uniform soldier aiming is off. I'm not a fan of this. Some people like it. I'll leave it off. I just do not like the way it performs whatsoever. And what I've done here, of course, is changed my zoom transition sensitivity smoothing. I feel like default does not feel good. I changed everything down to 4.0 to 75 and everything from 5.0 to 10.0 to 85. Personally, that feels the best for me. You may not have an issue with this, but this really did help out my aim. It feels like with all these settings, uh, once I got these worked out, everything feels a lot smoother in my opinion. When it comes to vehicles, like I said, I'm not much of a vehicle person, so we're going to skip over these. And like I said, when it comes to controller tuning, you can control, uh, change your controls however you want. But there are also some other good things here as well. You can go with the center dead zone to five, the axial dead zone to five, the max input threshold at 100. Same for the right stick, five, five, 100. And when it comes to the L2, R2 buttons, if you use L2 and R2 to shoot, I would recommend going 0, 100, 0, 100. I just have these set so you guys can see them because I know a lot of people shoot with L2, R2. Personally, like I said, I shoot with L1, R1. Now you can change, like I said, your button settings to custom. As you see here, I have mine set to custom and you can kind of see what I use over here. Uh, what the custom setup would be. Normally, I have most all of this changed. None of these buttons are the same. I change everything. I change my grenades to, you know, to be on the buttons instead of, you know, on the D-pad. My zoom, of course, is L1. My shooting is R1. I use L2 to shoot, kind of like bumper jumper and halo. That's just what I'm used to. You do not have to change those, but if you would like, uh, you can definitely do that and kind of fit them more to the way you use your controller in other FPS games. To me, it's all just muscle memory, so if I can you know, keep every game close to the same kind of button layout. It's a lot easier to hop in and, you know, play, you know, different things. I do upload a lot of different stuff here on the channel. I don't play just one particular shooter. Anyway, guys, this is kind of my updated settings. Like I said, they have changed a few things with these settings, considering they took a lot of stuff out, changed the UI up. I just want to give you guys a quick look at exactly what I'm using in case you need to do that. Like I said, if you want more of a in-depth, detailed kind of settings guide where I talk about everything, I posted that up in the top corner at the start of the video, so definitely give that a look. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course, the affiliates here on the channel, Empire Jerky and Amazon Associates. Also check out the merch store that is linked in the description as well. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.